Once again, here's Manjit Singh, CPA, with Tax Talk. Welcome back, folks. Uh, this week, uh, Ms. Young Hands and I are going to continue on our uh, F bar foreign bank account reporting requirements. Uh, unfortunately, it's past June 30th now. Uh, if you haven't done it, I'm not sure uh, if Ms. Young Hands can enlighten us what the consequences are if you file it just a few days late. And uh, then there is some other aspect that uh, we have up to August 31st to participate in voluntary disclosure of foreign bank accounts. Ms. Young Hans, please elaborate, give us more information on the disclosure program. Well, the first thing is you have to understand this is this is sort of chapter three or maybe even chapter four of um, some processes that have been going for, on for a long time. The IRS has always had what's called the voluntary disclosure program, which says that if if a person has inaccurately filed a tax return or failed to file a tax return and comes forth on a voluntary basis, uh, the, the IRS would look favorably on that in terms of whether or not to pursue criminal prosecution. Um, in 2003, there was uh, an offshore um, initiative which was mainly aimed at corporate taxpayers but didn't attract a whole lot of attention. In 2009, the IRS attracted a lot of attention with what was called the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure Program, um, which ended on October 15, 2009. A lot of people, for whatever reason, didn't hear about it or didn't get in on time. So we now have the 2011 Voluntary Disclosure Initiative. And the purpose of which is to get people who are outside the system, to get them into the system, to get them up to date, current, and compliant. It has a lot of potential benefits for uh, an individual, but it also has a lot of potential cost. The principal benefit, well, let me, before I get there, let me talk about what the rules are. In order to qualify for this program, one has to agree to do certain things by August 31st, 2011. And that is to file amended tax returns going back to 2003, 
to report any unreported income, and that would include both offshore income as well as domestic income. Um, and to file any unfiled uh, FBARs that we talked about the last time that haven't been filed, or if incorrect FBARs have been filed, to amend them and file correct ones. To pay all the tax associated with the amended tax returns, to pay all the interest associated with the amended tax returns. And then the IRS is proposing a deal, if you will, on the penalties. And that is, there, there's two parts to the penalties. 20% of the amend of the tax uh, due as a result of the amended tax return. So let's say you, after all, over all this period of time, you had an additional tax liability of $25,000. Then you'd have to pay the tax, you'd have to pay the interest, and you'd have to pay 20% of $25,000 as a penalty. In addition to that, you would have to have, you would have to pay a penalty equal to 25% of the value of your offshore accounts at the highest point during the relevant period. So that might be, let's say, in 2007. And you took the money out and you took a nice trip with it or something. It doesn't matter. They're going to look at the highest point during the disclosure period and ask the taxpayer to pay a penalty of 25% of that amount. It will include not only amounts in bank accounts, but amounts um, of the value of foreign assets, real estate, artwork, various things like that. Um, the, the program has a lot of potential exceptions which are too elaborate to go into here, although if you look at the IRS website, www.irs.gov, it, it does set all that out in great detail. Um, the principal benefit that an individual gets out of this is that the IRS promises that if you do everything I just said and do it completely and accurately and truthfully, and you make a pay or make arrangements to pay uh, the various financial components of it, you will not be criminally prosecuted. And obviously, that's a, an enormous benefit for a person who has a risk of being criminally prosecuted. Um, some people don't. And, and I think in order to make the judgment where you fit into that, you really need to get some competent legal advice. Um, if for some reason you are just hearing about this for the first time and you think I can't get all this done by October, uh, by August 31st, 2011, the IRS has just recently announced uh, the 
possibility of getting a 90-day extension if you ask for it before August 31st, 2011. And if you demonstrate to them that you have um, good reason for having not been able to do it sooner. And they will also require um, an extension of the statute of limitations because even though many people believe that the IRS has forever to do anything, that's not true. And there are rules that, that um, say that the IRS has to act within certain periods of time in these kinds of cases, which is basically six years. Um, so it's a pretty complicated program. It, it, it is financially um, certainly better than 50% of your account per year, which would could, could write, wipe out an account in very short order. But it is not inexpensive. And it, you know, you have to, you have to try to evaluate where you are on the spectrum of risk in order to decide whether it's a good, uh, it's a good idea for you. One quick question. It is a complicated program. Is it worth for an individual to go through all by with an accountant, or should they seek legal advice? Well, <laughs> this is not really an advertisement for for my business here, but as I said, the question of whether a person has, uh, what kind of risk the person has uh, is a variety of legal risks, and I think in order to assess that, obviously, it's wise to speak to an attorney. Most attorneys who, who do this kind of work will involve an accountant for purposes of preparing the amended returns uh, because it's just the most efficient thing to do. Um, so it usually ends up being a kind of joint project between an attorney and an accountant. The 90-day extension, are there any guidelines how to apply for the 90-day extension? Yes. On the website, um, the, IRS, you know, the IRS has a rule for everything. So on the website, it explains how you go, go about doing that. Okay. Uh, folks, uh, we are running out of time again this week uh, since Ms. Paula Younghands is very knowledgeable and we just lose track of the time when she gives us the explanation. So I'm going to request her to be here with us next weekend. Uh, to go further into the pro program, how the individual can participate. This is Manjit. In the meantime, see you next week.